And now traveling from Sao Paulo to Amsterdam, which is definitely one of my favorite places. I've had a vision in my head or a, a pipeline of creativity from San Francisco to Detroit to Amsterdam, and I call it San Fran Amstertroit. And it's a good route. I recommend it. Lots of hot parties in lots of warehousey spaces where you'll meet characters who are just inspiring and wonderful um, and from the deep underground scene. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd love for you to meet my friend Didara. I met him many years ago as part of the Burner community in Amsterdam. In 2015, he came and spoke at the European Leadership Summit that we hosted in the dam. Uh, and I've always really loved his work for its keen social commentary. Um, and early in the planning of this pandemic, we had a very serendipitous phone call. I was just starting to really uh, plan and lock down, lock down speakers in lockdown. Um, which makes them really easier to pin down. It, it works great for conference planning. Pandemics, ladies and gentlemen, host online events. You heard it here last. Anyway, um, so did Tara and I got to chat on the phone. Um, our friend Gregory connected us and he started telling me about um, that this pandemic was really a time for him who's really enjoyed a lot of international um, fame and recognition to fall back in love with Amsterdam. Ladies and gentlemen, Didara um, started doing his, his artwork in the electronic um, music scene of Amsterdam, and then that was in the 90s. Um, and then in the, from the 2000s on, he's really focused on extravagant, interactive performance installations in public spaces and he's really an incredible illustrator and, and thinker and oh Dadara, I'm so glad that you're you're here today with us. Welcome. Hey. You can hear me? Oh yeah, we can oh, definitely oh, that's hear my you. Zoom debut. <laughs> it's your Zoom debut? Yeah, my first time ever. <laughs> that's awesome. Welcome to Zoom. Welcome to Zoom. Um and it's it's a at first it's a little bit prickly, but then once you get the hang of it, you'll be um, adding emojis like the one I can add right now to just say I love you. There's all kinds of things we can do with this Zoom, but you've been doing all kinds of things um, in lockdown. And just to familiarize some folks with um, with what you do, we have some. Um, some slides of your work. Would you like me to to show some of them now, or should we chat a little bit first? Maybe we can chat a little bit. I don't okay. know, like the, the whole. Yeah, it's. I think it's. Um, maybe I mean, being the first time on Zoom, uh, I very much like doing things in so-called real life. So when the okay. pandemic started, I actually, like um, kind of my whole life came to a grinding halt. Like all the projects I had, everything. Uh, it just didn't happen within a week. It was all cancelled. But at the same time, uh, I don't know, I walked through Amsterdam. And as you mentioned, I've done so much abroad. But I really fell in love with the city again, the quietness. The, and, and I realized as an artist, I think there, what for me, art is, is making visible that which is there, but maybe is not yet visible for everybody. So I started exploring the city and just doing uh stuff like guerrilla kind of stuff, using all these locations, uh, I don't know, drawing on money in a sex worker room in the red light district. When the whole red light was uh, district was closed, I put an installation on the museum square to show like, I mean, that's art, all art institutions were closed. And just by doing that, then all these other kind of things happened, like serendipity, what you mentioned, how I got involved here. I mean, that's for me, that's just life. And uh, the pandemic has been a great serendipitous, uh, like accelerator in a way. How has it been an accelerator? I mean, you, you, you've talked to you about how kind of to be in a process of reinvention. I mean, sometimes there's a kind of a deep struggle and a not knowing that can happen. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I've never had an agenda in my life. I uh, I always love being in the moment, in the flow, seeing what's happening. And 
but I mean, it kind of stretched uh, me doing uh, with the pandemic because I had to readjust and reinvent like everything because there were just not the normal options to do stuff where it wasn't there anymore. I was planning a big project for Boom Festival. I mean, oh, it yeah. was just not happening. We were working on an exhibition about 10 years of street art. It didn't happen. Everything was not happening. But I realized that something else was happening. I mean, it's. I hope it's a once in a lifetime event, the whole COVID thing, but that was happening. And that's when I realized as an artist, I think that if something like that is happening, we're kind of obliged to to do something with it. Yeah, and you've been um, you've been cranking out some really interesting um, illustrations too. So you've, I do want to show the slides if I yeah. may now. Well, you can show them. I've warmed up a bit, so you can show. Uh, yeah, art. yeah, you're you're in the flow. I feel you. The, the small drawings. These are just for me. It's been what I've been doing since I'm like 14, 15 years old, and. Um, it's, it's not stuff that I sit down. It's not like big projects where I really, I go in my studio, I work on them. It's, it's just in my head and it can be, it can be any moment. It can be four o'clock at night. It can be when I'm under the shower or it, it's something I read and then I get, I don't know, I can get irritated. I can get happy. And suddenly I have this image and I have to make it. And it's kind of cool because the big projects, they can take like so much they take up so much time and this is just, it's an instant spur of the moment. I have this idea, I draw it and then uh, I can move on with my life again. <laughs> well, it's good that you take the time to do it. And sometimes maybe it, it talks back to you. <laughs> yeah. And I like, I think it's like with music um, or I, I often hear that the best songs that have been written in 15 minutes. And I also, I don't necessarily believe in the concept of time that an hour, it, it, it matters how many hours you put into something. Right. Like I think everything has the amount of time that it needs. So like for a big project or a paint, sometimes there are paintings. Like I work for a thousand hours on a painting and the painting will need that. And a, sometimes a drawing will need 10 minutes. So I think everything just needs uh, the time it has. Yeah, but it's actually, uh, the, I don't know, the, the, at the moment, I'm not doing any projects. I'm just painting and painting and painting. And three weeks ago, this whole lockdown and everything got a bit to me. And uh, I got a bit de depressed and I was going like, I don't know. The, I didn't see the beauty of um, COVID anymore or the, the pandemic world. The, there's the time for introspection. But now I realized I made this tran transition into like not doing stuff in the outside world, but painting. And it's, at the moment, I'm really happy again. <laughs> I think actually the social distance one between the heart and the mind is something a lot of people struggle with at the moment. What I love with these drawings is that I um, I prefer them to speak for themselves. Yeah, that's, that's for me also the beauty of creating an image that often people ask me like, oh, I feel this or I think it's this is what it's telling me. And they all they ask me like, am I right? And I go like, yeah, of course. <laughs> You're right. Because if that's what it touches inside of you, that's for me what also art is about. I create something which comes deep from inside my feelings, from I create from the heart. And then somebody, if that touches somebody else, I will touch somebody else's heart and who they are, and they will, it'll trigger stuff within them. It's the same with I, I love art, I love music. And often when I hear certain music, I see things, it'll trigger so much inside of me. And I realized that that maybe wasn't necessarily the intention of the artist to do, but if it triggers that inside of me, that's for me, that's what it's all about. So if the guy steps like three steps to the left or three steps to the right, he's free. So I guess it's all uh, freedom is also a lot inside your own mind or the way I always love the saying that, um, we don't see things as they are, but as we are. Ooh, tell us about this. Yeah, so what happened actually is how I've been doing a lot of stuff once the pandemic started, but one of the first uh, things what I d did was, and actually I think this is a beautiful time to collaborate with other artists. I, and I see it happening also with musicians. And somehow there are all these other artists that I've known for a really long time. And we always had this idea of, okay, we want to collaborate, but then we're like, you know, busy, busy, busy and doing other things. 
and suddenly no one was busy anymore and I don't know it's like also in Amsterdam all the tourists disappeared and it's it almost felt like all the noise just quieted down and um, we could all see each other so I started collaborating with a lot of other artists this is a guy called Def P he's actually he was the first Dutch hip-hop guy to make hip-hop rap in uh, the Dutch language uh, and he's also a painter and illustrator and what we did was we started making two paintings about the Melkweg, the Milky Way, and the next slide probably will be, if you show that one, Paradiso. So these are two really iconic music venues that have been around since the 60s. And we started painting them, but obviously both of them are closed. Nothing is happening in there. And it was also beautiful to see what you mentioned, that I kind of fell in love with Amsterdam again, but I also made all these new connections. I actually went onto the street with my sketchbook and started drawing the building of Paradiso. Wow. Noticed all these new details, but also Paradiso and Melkweg since, I mean, for them, music is their life. It's their blood. It's, nothing was happening anymore. But then, because we were making these paintings, for them, it felt like, hey, there is again some love, some energy pouring into our hearts, into our venues. So we got the chance to do a live stream in the main hall of Paradiso, which is an old church. So we finished our paintings there. They made posters of the paintings, which they again used to uh, raise some funds. Uh, yes, it was also beautiful to see how we started making these paintings. And then uh, for me, I also always love that art gets out into the real world. So I really love to paint and I love to create and draw. But uh, a lot of my stuff has always entered the real world and it can be the real world as in Burning Man, but also especially doing stuff in the city. And the next slide, which you showed, was that one I actually did with you. <laughs> this girlfriend. one is really great. And uh, there's the Amsterdam Tower, which is like the big, yeah, it's kind of the iconic tower of Amsterdam. Uh -huh. and, uh, but in there, there is like, uh, there is uh, a restaurant, there is a club, IDNT, which is the big festival organizer. Uh, there's on the roof, tourists can visit. And everything was just, this whole tower is shut down. And then we um, created this image, like COVID-19, a social distance infographic to kind of, again, make visible how social distance is affecting us. So we created these one and a half uh, meter circles made out of, I think there were a thousand <laughs> bottles, empty <laughs> bottles. I didn't drink them all myself. <laughs> it was also a collaboration. Sure, sure. Um, well, this is really funny too, because I feel like um, a lot of folks reported that during um, COVID-19, they f were feeling like in order to sort of overcome that sense of isolation, that they were turning to drinking. So the fact that you guys are like showcasing the social distance and everything else and all the calories that we put between us and the rest of the world, I feel like it <laughs> definitely makes me smile. Ooh. Yeah, so, uh, another uh, installation I did. And um, so I think most people here will probably be familiar with the artist Is Present by Marina Abramovic. I think it's yeah. the most iconic artworks of this century. And uh, But what happened in Amsterdam is, and I mean, it happened almost everywhere, like the Rijksmuseum we see on this picture, it all the museums closed down, all the galleries closed down. Or, I mean, there was no space for art anymore. Still, culture and art is like one of the most affected areas by COVID because there's just so little we can do or all the venues closed down and i wanted to make that visible so what i did was i recreated the table and the two chairs uh, and i thought like okay because if marina abramovic is not sitting there then it's just a table and two chairs but uh, it just becomes something material and i think that's what art also does it takes us out of the purely material world and takes us into that which is i mean transcends beyond the material but again since I created this and put this uh, in the museum square, it again became art. But then, uh, yes, you mentioned we uh, the, the fact that I'm a part of reinventessence is serendipity. But what I love about doing stuff in public space is that serendipity becomes part of your work. Because if we see the next slide. Sure. 
So um, <laughs> city officials. What's I mean, going they, on here? <laughs> they often don't really uh, it happen more often that they don't really like what I do. So I think <laughs> after four or five days, it got removed. And then actually what's cool about social media, people follow what you do. And somebody sent me a message. She went like, wow, shit, they're removing your artwork. And I just sent a message back, like, please take photos. I jumped <laughs> on my bike. I was already too late. And first I was obviously really pissed off. But then I realized this is a gift. The fact that they removed the work, the artist is not present. And if the city officials, if the this is, yeah, hand having, it's a kind of police we have in Amsterdam. Uh, the fact that they removed it meant that the artist really is not present anymore. And then, I mean, uh, caused a lot <laughs> yeah. of commotion. They can't sit down and stare into people's eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah nothing, but if you see the next slide, yeah. so I made a, <laughs> I made a sculpture out of them Clever. carrying my installation away, and um, <laughs> I, I mean that's something I could have never thought of before when I put it out there in the city. It was just a gut feeling. I went like, "Damn, everything, all art is gone. How can I do something?" to render that visible and I, I just put it out there and then all this happened and actually end of uh, last year the Amsterdam Museum they they bought this sculpture with the whole story and <laughs> it was almost like a full, full cycle <laughs> you are just so I love that you um you know you let the the artwork be informed by the world around you and um and the world around you informs the artwork and you sort of just start something without really knowing where it's going to go and and let it lead you the whole process of making art is also going into the unknown i mean it obviously with art there are no rules everybody does it in their own way and it can i mean everything is okay in a way but for me it's really going into the unknown so i don't really like to just make a sketch and render it perfectly how it will look and then just make it because for me that's boring i mean i already know what will be the outcome so what i mostly do is start with an idea and and then whatever happens along the way that's actually the most interesting part for me and it'll affect the sculpture the installation there is the whole interaction between uh, what happens in the outside world and what happens inside of me and that together becomes like a kind of chemical reaction I think that that's so brilliant about who you are. And you're also just really candid about your art making process, which is for me really real and, and really unique. A lot of the times, you know, folks will say, I mean, you said you want the art to speak for itself and that makes sense and, and to be subject to, to what people interpret, but then also, you know, being open to giving insight into the processes that that inform your contributions to us is, is really a gift. Um, you've been getting a lot of love in the chats too. Squishell um, was saying that like for real was mind blowing, that your art, art is very evocative. And I just got a question from the fabulous Alex Holt. Hey Alex um, and Dadara, Alex asks, how do you typically approach others to work with you on your projects? Yeah, I've, like Def P, the, the 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 guy with whom I painted parodies on Melkweg, actually 25 years ago, we together we created an album cover for one of his albums. Uh, so a lot of these people, I mean, I, I guess it's like everywhere, the, the art scene is not that big. Once you're doing something and you're really uh, you're going for it, then you will know the other people in your area. But what's very interesting at the moment yeah you mentioned like for real so i have a a, a book for the people that don't know it <laughs> i built a huge golden like at burning man and people really hated it because so of... yeah he, so so just to break it down so Jadara built a huge monument to the facebook like and <laughs> but it's i mean just that whole idea of like the gesturing and liking and just automatically liking, liking what someone ate for dinner, liking, you know, their kids' pictures, liking that they're going out on Saturday or staying in and drinking during COVID. Like, 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 it's exhausting. So yeah, but on the, on the other hand, evocative for people. people. 
thought it was that I didn't like social media or whatever. I mean, okay, I'm for the first time on Zoom and I'm, I'm a bit suspicious of the tech world. But on the other hand, so I have my local community, all the artists here, I I, I kind of, it was inevitable that we, we, of course, we work together because we have the same kind of vibe. We share the same ideas. But now what I really love is like Instagram for me is a way to not only show my art, but I realized I can see, I can get inspired by so many other artists who are not living in my neighborhood, but all over the world. And what's really beautiful is that I got to know a lot of these artists in real life. So we connected because of Instagram, but then we uh, we connected in different countries. And uh, so it's also a way to collaborate is not only the people from your own uh, hood and your own, uh, who you can really feel the vibe, but we have ways, because with Like For Real, it was not about being anti-tech uh, or anti-social media, but I just believe that social media and tech is an amazing layer which we can add to our real lives. But yeah. when we start migrating our real lives into like the tech realm, that's that's where for me it goes kind of wrong. Or if this would be like, if this is our reality, Video killed the radio star. Uh, what? <laughs> Video killed the radio star. Yeah. <laughs> so where can um, where can folks find your artwork? Yeah, so it's I mean it's yeah as I mentioned it it can be on Instagram it's uh, on social media it's easy to find because I mean it's obviously we are on a screen now and um, yeah the people I don't know but most people will not live in Amsterdam here. So the, the people uh, in Amsterdam, they can find it. It will randomly pop up uh, in different uh, places. And um, yeah, I, I actually, it's, uh, I can't show a picture. At, I mean, I posted it on Instagram, but like we have a curfew clock at the moment uh, here uh -huh. in Amsterdam. And I created a curfew clock. So there's from nine, the curfew is from 9 p.m. till 4.30 a.m. And uh, we, we, we took a clock in the city and we made it black from nine to four thirty. So since two days, there's so I like putting stuff out in the real world. Um, but what's again was like for real. What I love about social media is that you can kind of um, you can just make it way stronger. It's like throwing a, a rock in the water. You know, the first impact. That's what's really interesting for me. But then all the circles. For me, it's also the yin yang. It's like I, if I work, if I'm so long in my studio, just doing something crazy out in in the city, it makes me so happy. And um, a tip for people: if you do yeah. anything out there for guerrilla art, uh, just wear an orange vest, like fluorescent orange, <laughs> vest. and it's like your invisible, your invis. It's like your invisibility cape. Uh, yeah, we. I don't uh, know a lot how of us Harry here Potter have... does it, but I mean, orange vests <laughs> they work. Yeah, a lot of us here have a, a friend in common, Mad Dog Madigan. And even at Burning Man, he wears like this black T-shirt that just says security. And like all of the cops just like wave him on. They're just like, yeah, buddy, like one of us. So yeah, orange vest, security shirt. I'm with the band. It works. <laughs> well, Dadar, I'm a huge fan. I really admire you and um, really respect and appreciate your time and and thanks for for coming on and, and sharing with us i know that you've intrigued um, a lot of folks here um, and can't really wait to see uh, what you do next and thank you so much for joining uh, maybe what's nice is to i mean i will not show because it's a back but this is a glimpse of my studio oh wow you got a so, lot of nice space that's awesome yeah yeah, it's uh, there's a big space there, and I'm uh, but I'm not showing anyone yet. <laughs> well, we can't wait to see what you unveil. So, right. thank you, Val. Yeah, it was really cool to be uh, really, really cool that you're doing this. Ah, thank you, Val. And